The Schrodinger software suite continues to evolve with the latest 2017-3 Schrodinger update. Let's take a look at some of the new features and enhancements, including both performance and usability improvements. Within the Maestro interface, a new peptide building facility has been integrated into the 3D builder. Here, one can grow peptides from a set of residues with the ability to control their geometry and secondary structure. The expand selection controls have been enhanced with new options. One can now expand a selection based on complete objects, matching items, bonds or ribbons. For example, if one wanted to select residues in a specific helix, simply select an atom in the helix and then expand the selection along the ribbon. Or if one wanted to select atoms of the same representation, in this case, the residues that are represented as ball and stick, simply selects a ball and stick atom, then expand the selection to matching items with the same representation so that all other ball and stick atoms are selected. Significant improvements to the custom label editing panel have also been made. Add new labels from a selection of atom properties or entry properties, and manage how the labels appear by rearranging their order. Labels based on custom text are now also easier to edit. Down in the structure hierarchy, the ability to create custom sets has been introduced. Right click on current selection and choose save as custom set to name and define the selection. Custom sets can then be retrieved here via the quick select menu. Among the applications and tasks, Various improvements have been made. A reimagined version of the FEP Plus panel is available for the setup, execution and analysis of free energy perturbation calculations. The new FEP Plus panel integrates the previous two separate FEP mapper and mapper analysis panels into one panel providing an at-a-glance view of structural and binding affinity data to assess prediction quality and guide the iterative design and test decision making in lead optimization. So let's take a look at some of the new features in the new FEP Plus panel. Here the overview tab contains a ligand table with information for each ligand. Ligands that have undergone the FEP calculation will have their binding affinity reported as an affinity delta G or PKI or just KI if experimental data is known and has been included. Here we see a graphical representation of the estimated affinity for the ligand, shown as a range based on the predicted error. A blue vertical line represents the known experimental value, again if it is available. New ligands can be easily added to the table, including via the 2D sketcher. Choosing an existing ligand as a template for sketching new ligands not only saves time but ensures a starting 3D pose that resembles that of the template ligand. All ligands will have their structural quality assessed with a warning symbol shown if there are potential issues like if explicit torsion parameters in the force field are missing. Over in the map tab we see a familiar perturbation graph with tools for editing as well as a summary of the ligand data and hysteresis data once a calculation has been run. Newly added ligands can be added to the map automatically via the Update Map button to be incorporated in follow-up calculations. Quick side note, the option to create star topology maps for large-scale FEP Plus jobs is available from the Advanced Options. In the Activity Cliff tab, we see a new view of the FEP Plus results specifically to allow easy recognition of compounds that are predicted to be potent or show large free energy changes with small structural variation compared to a reference. For example, here we can set the reference ligand and see that in the lower right there are ligands that are similar to the reference but predicted to be more potent, whereas in the upper left there are ligands that are dissimilar to the reference and predicted to be less potent. As the name suggests, this tab is useful for finding ligands that may appear very similar, but where their potencies may differ significantly, a possible sign of an activity cliff. 
The Analysis tab is used to analyze the results of an FEP Plus job. Here, we can review estimates of the relative free energies for the perturbations and binding free energies for the ligands. Display detailed information on the protein-ligand interactions. Review ligand properties and changes derived from the simulation. Protein changes during the simulation for the two complexes and simulation convergence for connected complexes. Finally, the panel allows users to organize their view based on custom filters, perform searches, and users can efficiently share predictions with colleagues as results can be exported as PDF reports in CSV format as PNG images or structure files. And there is also an option to view and export correlation plots if experimental data is available. Various updates have been made to the R Group Library Creator panel, including a new option to automatically analyze and create the R groups from a set of ligands with a common core. In this example, we have a set of congeneric ligands. If the shared core is defined by the maximum common substructure, we can see the various R groups attached to the common core. And here we can see the core and the R group positions that were detected. One can select the R groups and add them to your custom library to be used in future R group enumeration jobs. The R group creator panel also has a new option to define the attachment bonds from a set of known functional groups when producing R groups from a set of diverse structures or building block fragments. For example, to create R groups from a set of hydrazine building blocks, we can now choose the appropriate hydrazine functional group, which then automatically defines the smarts pattern, as well as the leaving and attachment positions. Another new feature is seen when creating R groups, as it now shows a preview of the R group structures, so the user may choose a custom selection or select all R groups to be added to the R group library, again, to be used in any R group enumeration calculations. Other updates are seen in molecular dynamics, where we now have a new option for choosing solute tempering, also known as REST, in replica exchange calculations. And in glide ligand docking, recently used docking grids can now be selected for easy access without the need to rebrowse for the grid files. Over in biologics, the Protein Surface Analyzer panel shows improved workspace labels used for identifying positive, negative, and hydrophobic surface patches on a protein. And finally, the 2017-3 update includes the latest version of the NIME Analytics Platform 3.4. Among the Schrodinger extensions, we see updates to the System Builder and Molecular Dynamics nodes, both of which have their node configuration dialogues resemble their corresponding setup panel used in Maestro. Similarly, the covalent docking node reveals most of the same settings as used in Maestro. These are just some of the highlights from the 2017-3 Schrodinger release. As always, for the complete list of all previous enhancements and features, visit schrodinger.com slash new features.